Monday night, baby. Monday night, we are doing this for all the marbles. Monday night, we're doing this for all the tea in China. That means the 2021 college football playoff national championship game to end, conclude the 2020 season between the Alabama Crimson Tide and the Ohio State Buckeyes. But this right here, on a Friday TGIF edition of the show, it's in my own words with yours truly, Stephen Smith of Touchdown. Alabama Magazine, hottest show on the streets, number one forum for Crimson Tide football news. Very excited to have each and every last one of you tuned in. 
to the show on today. We got a lot to get into, a lot to unpack, a lot to talk about. As always, the show brought to you by WeOwnTheFourthQuarter.com. That is WeOwnTheFourthQuarter.com. If you haven't done so, go ahead right now, copy that four-finger bling necklace, four-finger bling jewelry, show them that support for head coach Nick Saban and the University of Alabama football program as it has a tradition of dominating owning the fourth quarter so check them out right now we own the fourth quarter.com we are in our new home of Birmingham bringing you the show from the studio here in Birmingham streaming this to you via YouTube speaking of the channel go ahead right now give a thumbs up on the show like the show up like it up give us a thumbs up there hit that subscribe button turn all of those notifications on so that way you can have the best news notes alerts here on your program that being the crimson tide not only are we streaming this to you through youtube but we got you covered also on Facebook and Twitter. So all forms of social media, we got you on YouTube, we have you on Facebook, and we have you on Twitter. So no excuse whatsoever for you not to be tuned in to the Alabama football content. As always, got my man John Ivory in the building, the man, the myth, the legend, the maestro in the production studio. Happy to have him rocking and rolling with us today and we want you the passionate Alabama football fans to interact with us tonight and you can do this by calling 205-448-1358 but now I'm going to call in to let your voice your thoughts your opinions be made known on this show 205-448-1358 and one more time 205-448-1358 but I'm going to call in to let your voice be heard here on the show. A little bit later on, we'll be, we're going to be able to sit down and be joined by my man Nathan Baird. Nathan Baird, who covers Ohio State. He's the Buckeyes football beat writer for Cleveland.com. Cleveland.com. So I'm looking forward to sitting down with Nathan Baird to break down the Buckeyes in this matchup against the Crimson Tide. Before we get into topic number one of the conversation, got to shout out Jimmy Clay and Spencer Revely for donating early into the Super Chats. Jimmy Clay, that $20 donation coming in from him and our own Spencer Revely donating that $5 on his end. So appreciate the love coming from, Jim, from, uh, from Jimmy and Spencer starting us off here on this show. But topic number one of the conversation right here, right now, and it goes to this Alabama defense, in particular, Christian Barmore, can Ohio State, can this Ohio State offensive line hold Christian Barmore from affecting Justin Fields in the, in the pocket? Can this Ohio State offensive line hold, just, hold Christian Barmore, excuse me, from getting to Justin Fields, sacking Justin Fields, creating pressure to Fields, flushing him out of the pocket, making him feel highly uncomfortable in his decision-making, going through his progressions in this matchup against the Crimson Tide. Is this a game where Christian Barmore can just really, truly wreak havoc on this Ohio State offensive front? And the reason why I bring the question up is, you know, Justin Fields has had a he's had a, he's had a, he's had a good season this. He's had a good year, despite the fact that Ohio State's only played in seven games. Fields, you know, over 1,900 yards passing, 316 yards rushing. He's got 26 total touchdowns, 21 passing, five rushing, six interceptions. But the reason why I bring the question up is the offensive line. For Ohio State has had the most difficult time protecting fields in the pocket. For someone who's played in the least amount of games of the four quarterbacks in the CFP, when you discuss Mac Jones, who's played in 12 games, you look at uh, Ian Book of Notre Dame, who played in 12 games, uh, Trevor Lawrence of Clemson, who's played in 10 games, Justin Fields has played only seven. So for a guy that's played in the least amount of games of the quarterbacks in the playoff, he's been sacked almost the most amount of times. Justin Fields has been sacked 20 times 
this season. This offensive line has had a difficult time trying to keep him clean in the pocket, and whether it's tried to use a tight end for max protection or have a running back chip in and help block, not, nothing has worked to keep Fields clean. Nothing has worked to keep Fields protected. Nothing has worked to keep Fields, you know, uh, not on the ground in terms of playing uh, the quarterback position. And uh, if you go back and you watch the film, uh, just in games against Indiana and Northwestern, those two right there, eight of the 20 sacks to Fields have come against combined Indiana and Northwestern. Uh, Indiana got to him five times, sacked him five times. Northwestern sacked him three times in the Big Ten title game. And uh, uh, and when both of those teams have been able to get pressure to him, it's resulted in five interceptions combined for both of those teams. So five of the six picks for fields have come against the likes of the Indiana Hoosiers and Northwestern. So uh, when you dive into uh, this matchup against Alabama and and uh, more than likely Christian Barmore here, he's playing his best football of the season. Christian Barmore is playing his best ball right now. The 6'5", 310-pounder from Philadelphia. Barmore, 32 tackles on the season, seven and a half tackles for loss, seven sacks, six quarterback hurries, three pass breakups, and three forced fumbles. Now, the seven sacks that Barmore has, he is tied with Will Anderson, for the team lead and for the SEC lead. And uh, since the Georgia game, since the matchup against the Bulldogs, week four, the fourth game of the season for Alabama, Barmore, six sacks, six and a half tackles for loss, five quarterback hurries, three pass breakups, and three forced fumbles. So the young man has been on an absolute tear since the Georgia game. No one's been able to defend him. No one's been able to neutralize him. No one's been able to block him. No one's been able to keep him away from its respective quarterback. He has been a menace on the defensive line. Christian Barmore has. And I remember speaking to DJ Dale this week on Thursday. He took part in media viewing one of about five to six defensive players. And the question I addressed to Dale was, is it some type of switch that Barmore is able to turn on, like what makes him so good? What makes him so dynamic? What makes him so fierce? What makes him so energetic along that defensive line? Because, of course, no Tide fans, you guys remember in 2019 when he set foot on the field, even in limited action, and was able to produce. A lot of you guys were like, why is he not starting? Why is Barmore not on the field more? He's all over the quarterback. He's all over the running back. He's creating negative plays in the backfield. He's forcing turnovers. Why is Nick Saban not putting big 58 on the field more as a starter? And he's playing more now. He made the first team, he made first team all SEC. But I asked, but I addressed the question to DJ Dale, is there a switch that Barmore flips on? What makes him so different? And he's like, Steven, there is no switch. This is just who he is. It's just simply who he is. He believes no one can stop him. No one can affect him. No one can neutralize him. No one can keep him away from the quarterback. That's just the type of guy that he is. He's a pure beast, pure animal, pure monster. He feels like it doesn't matter who you line up in front of me, whether it's a center, whether it's an offensive guard, whether it's an offensive tackle, I'm getting to the quarterback. That's the mindset that Christian Barmore has, according to one DJ Dale. And ever since the Georgia game, he has been on an absolute tear this season. So uh, Ohio State's offensive front is going to have its hands it's going to have its hands full dealing with this young man coming off the ball, exploding off the ball from the middle of that defensive interior when you talk about getting to Justin Fields, putting him on the ground, roughing him up a little bit, making it very frustrating for him to make plays. Now, in the event that Ohio State, that the Buckeyes are able to have some success and maybe doubling Barmore, now you open up the dynamic duo at outside linebacker in Will Anderson and Christopher Allen. 
both of these two have had big success this season sacking the quarterback. Both of these two have had big success this season getting to the opposing team's passing game. 29 of Alabama's 34 sacks here. That's about 85.3%. 29 of Alabama's 34 sacks have come since the Georgia game. And when you look at Will Anderson, seven sacks for him. Once again, tied with Barmore for the SEC lead and for the lead in terms of Alabama's roster. Christopher Allen has six sacks to his credit, and he's kind of been the unsung hero of the pass rush. Finally healthy, finally good to go, finally at peak power, finally at peak strength, and we have seen it all year. Number four, exploding off the snap of the ball, working the pass rush moves, whether it's a spin move, a bull rush, a club rush, but getting to the opposing team's quarterback, creating those sacks, getting those negative plays. So for Ohio State, regardless of how dynamic Justin Fields has been, regardless of how much of a dual threat quarterback that he is, he's played in seven games and he's been sacked almost the most times by any quarterback in the college football playoff, which that, that's interesting how Ian Book has been sacked the most 25 times in the 25 times this season, but he's played in five more games than Fields, and it, Fields is regarded as way more of a dual threat quarterback than Book is. But it goes back to the struggles Ohio State's offensive line they've had all season. They have not been able to keep Fields clean. They've not been able to keep Fields from being on the ground. They've not been able to keep Fields from taking on obvious big hits. And when you're facing an Alabama defense that, once again, pass rush has hit at the right time. Pass rush has been clicking at the right time. Alabama's been able to hit home and get these sacks. And it's not just with Barmore, Anderson, and Chris Allen, but you also have to look at Christian Harris, of whom Alabama has been using more from the blitzing aspect, even as an inside linebacker, as a weak side backer. Christian Harris this season, four and a half sacks to his credit. He's got about six to seven quarterback hurries as well to his disposal. So Alabama's got a multitude. They got multiple guys that can get out for the quarterback. But because of the tear Christian Barmore has been this entire season, this is setting up for him to be a game up front where he can harass fields from the middle interior of that defensive front. Looking forward to seeing what he does in this matchup. But we take our first break here on the show. Don't touch that dial. Just getting started. Upon our return, we get to you, the Alabama football fans, entertaining your phone calls, your thoughts, your tweets, your chats, your texts, and your super chats. We have a conversation with you, the Bama Nation, right after this. You're watching In My Own Words with Stephen M. Smith, brought to you by We Own the Fourth Quarter. Get your four-finger bling necklace today by visiting weownthefourthquarter.com. Throw them foes up. Every sports fan deserves the proper representation. Wit Will Sports introduces to you the title towel. Wave that title towel in the air like you just don't care. In support of Nick Saban and the Alabama Crimson Tide. Only $9.99 and it lasts a lifetime. Head on over to WitWillSports.com and get your title towel today. Remember the taste of Grandma's delicious sweets? Emily's Heirloom Pound Cakes brings back those precious memories with just one bite. Each cake made from scratch. They make the perfect dessert to share with family and friends for any occasion, and ordering is easy. Visit Emily's Heirloom Pound Cakes.com. Click the online store and shop. Then pick up your fresh cake at the kitchen in downtown Homewood. Order yours online at Emily's Heirloom Pound Cakes.com. Emily's Heirloom Pound Cakes, making memories from scratch. Thank you for tuning in. Show your support right now by clicking that like button. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button now and enable all notifications to make sure you don't ever miss any of the best Alabama football news, notes, and information right here on Touchdown Alabama. We are back into the action here, folks, from the break on the number one forum for Bama 
Football news in my own words with yours truly, Stephen Smith of Touchdown Alabama Magazine. And before we go to the phone lines to take your calls, call segment brought to you by the Blue Wrench Gang. We got a bevy of super chats to get to. Appreciate you guys for showing us the love here. We start off with Willie Beeman, my man Willie Beeman, donating that $10 donation via the super chats. Spencer Redley came back with another $5 donation on his end. Appreciate that love from Spencer. How about Gu Gucci Tide rolling in here with that $10 donation. Appreciate that from Gucci Tide. Jimmy Clay comes back with a $10 donation. Appreciate Jimmy Clay. Willie351 drops in that $2.99. Appreciate that love there in the bucket there from Willie351. From, uh, Willie and then Dallas Schwartz rounds us off with a $20 donation from his ends. We appreciate Willie Beeman, Spencer Redley, Gucci Tide. Dallas Schwartz, Jimmy Clay, and Willie351 showing us all the love here via the Super Chats for Touchdown Alabama Magazine. But we go to the phone lines right now to take your calls, 205-448-1358, the number two. Call in and let your voice be heard, 205-448-1358. And the man, Waylon, is back. Waylon, what's going on, man? Happy New Year to you. Wait just a minute now. Go, Jay. You ain't got to leave. You ain't got to leave the chat. Then we, well, we, we, all, we welcome all Ohio State fans, all these colleges along, all across the world in the United States on TDA. They welcome you in here. When you're drawing Ohio State fans, that must mean Stephen M. Smith is blowing some smoke out of Alabama tonight. I'm down here. I tell you, Stephen, I was in hot pursuit on silver. President Rutherford B. Hayes sent me three murder warrants. He said, go to Miami and get them guys, and I'm down here, and I tell you what, this warm air feels good on this old body. Talk to me, Stephen. Talk to me. Feeling good, man. Feeling good, Wayne, and enjoying the new year. Jalen Waddle looked great in practice this week. Looked really good in practice this week. So I feel like he may not start, but I think Coach Saban's going to have Waddle on the field. I think Waddle plays in the national championship game now. How many how many plays they script for him remains to be seen. But I think 17 at Jalen Waddle will play against Ohio State. Well, we talked about today, and my buddy is down here. He's been down here for over 30 years in the Fioro Law Firm on Ponce de Leon Drive here. You put Smitty on one side and Waddle on the other side, and uh, – you better be running from the law, I guarantee you that, because if you're not, you're going to be in trouble, huh? You're going to be in some great trouble. And then on top of that, you got to add John Mechie, and they're also Mechie having a good year, too. Yeah, everybody's having a good year. Well, we're going to do one more show with y'all, Mel. We'll see the Monday, and uh, we'll be doing a show Monday. What time are you coming down this? Are you going to come to Miami, or what? Uh, what's on your mind? You headed down this way this weekend? Flying out, flying out tomorrow morning, Waylon. Flying out tomorrow morning. <laughs> well, all right. I'll hit you up in here. Just give you time to get down here then. We'll see what's going on. After Monday, we'll have the Wednesday show there. And, and we'll have a good show. And uh, I just don't think Ohio State can beat Alabama. I'm the most critical man that's ever been against Alabama. I, I've had people tell me that, but I'm going to tell you something. That's what it takes to have a perfect team. You've got to be just like Coach Saban, Coach Bryant, Coach Stalin as well you got to keep those guys' nose to the grindstone and show them every mistake they make. And when you do, they'll make those mistakes into perfection. And when they do, you'll wind up with a team like you got this year. All right, Stephen, everybody in the chat, hello. All the people, all the it's, uh, the last year said the good things about me. I appreciate everybody in the city, state, countries, and towns. We'll see you all on Wednesday. Coach Saban will be holding that big trophy up. Ooh, Lord, we're going to have a celebration time. TDA, I'm gone. Bye-bye, Stephen. Appreciate that love they're coming from Wayland starting us off on a Friday. We take our second call of the night. You're live on In My Own Words. What's going on? Hey, Steven. How you doing, man? Doing good. And yourself? Uh, this is Devon from D.C., man. Uh, I'm a, I heard all the stuff you were saying about the pass rush, and uh, I think that's the key. I think we can really control. If we can control keeping him from stepping up in the pocket and making him move laterally, that's when you can see Moses and Harris really have their effect because they're really good at getting sideline to sideline. I'm of the mindset we cover better than Clemson does anyway. Clemson did not cover them. They were running free in the secondary. You're not going to run free in our secondary. Florida 
has elite receivers. Pitts and Tony aren't your average everyday guys. Not saying Ohio State his receivers aren't good. I don't think they're Pitts and Tony and Grimes good. You get what I'm saying? So I believe you could also spy Justin Fields a little bit with a Dylan Moses or a Christian Harris. And that way, you, your man up on the outside and just live with the results because I don't believe they can beat our press man coverage one-on-one all night. I just don't think he'll be as accurate. And I think our safeties, Jordan Battle, Jordan Battle has really played well. I like the way Brian Branch played the last game and, and played some Malachi Moore. And I'll I say this. Will be back. I'll say I, this. Keep your eyes on DeMarco Helms. Yeah, he's playing well. He's playing well. You know, he's from my area. I'm from, I live right around the corner from DeMatha High School. So I watched him all through his high school career. So uh, I've always liked the way he plays, and he's been playing very well. I think the young guys have grown up. It's been like a baptism under fire, but people forget this is a very young defense, very young on the back end, outside of Sertan. Job is a guy that didn't play a lot last year, played spot duty. So, and the safeties are all young. They're all young guys. They're not guys that played last year a whole lot. So we're learning how to play together and they don't have to be great. The offense is so good. Just a few stops a game, a turnover like they got against uh, Notre Dame on the Harris pick, and uh, we'll win this game 38-24. We'll win this game 38-24. 38-24. Appreciate the call, man. Appreciate that prediction. 38-24 in favor of Bam on that call right there. We take our next call of the night. You're live on the show. What's going on? What's on, Steve? This is Alex from Miami. Alex from Miami. What's happening? What's going on? Everybody's talking about Smitty and Waddle, but believe me, Minchie is going to have the biggest game of his career. Oh, but baby! Him alone by itself, and Minchie is going to tear Ohio State secondary apart. Well, I mean... About, yes, I'm telling you, nobody's talking about Minchie. Minchie's the next big thing. He's the next big thing. I'm not disagreeing with you because... Mechie has had moments this season where he does pop. You you watch the Georgia game this year. You watch the A and M game where what he had what he had five catches for one eighty one and two touchdowns. So Mechie has had moments where if you do not cover him, he will pop off on you. And that's what Ohio State's going to make a mistake. Devil Smitty and Mechie will make them pay. Like that call right there. Giving that big ups to John Mechie, my man Alex out of Miami. Appreciate that call right there coming from him. We take our next call. You're live on the show. What's going on? Hey, how you doing, Steven? This is uh, Joseph from um, Germany right now via Mobile, Alabama. How you doing tonight? Doing well on yourself. How you feeling, Joe? I'm feeling good, man. I'm kind of worried about, I'm kind of worried about um, Dylan Moses right now, though, and uh, – um, covering these running backs and tight ends out of the backfield. Uh, my biggest question is, do you think it's better to put Moses on the edge um, opposite um, of Will Anderson rushing the passer and putting um, Chris Anderson back in coverage to handle these running backs and tight ends? I think I think Christian Harris can handle – I think Christian Harris can handle the running backs and tight ends. My thing with Moses would be have him come downhill – and get to Trey Sermon before Trey Sermon gets going. That's my main thing there. C- Christian Harris showed you against Notre Dame he can play in coverage because he got the pick in that game. What I want to see from Dylan, fit those run gaps, come downhill, and get to Trey Sermon before that young man gets going. That, that, oh, that'd yeah, be my exactly. thing right there. Oh, yeah, Steven, I, I, I agree completely. But I, but, but um, I keep me up at night is um, Dylan Moses in coverage. I get a Georgia game covering these running backs out of the backfield. He he, he can't handle it. I don't. I, I think I think, he, I think he has his hands full. He's overwhelmed. I don't know if he's 100 percent healed or what. But I think he um he need, he's better off stopping the run instead of um cover and uh, um, pass coverage. He's better at stopping the run. I mean, I I know he came out and he talked about the the difficulty that was this year. But in this game, the national championship, he is going to have to play with a knot of fire. He's got to come with fire. He's got to play with fire. We appreciate that call right there coming in, talking about one Dylan Moses. We take our next call right here. You're live on the show. What's going on? Hello? You're live on the show. What's happening? 
Hey, what's going on with you? Y'all know Alabama Nation. Y'all know what's going on Monday. You know we're going to take that championship home. Forget Ohio State. Y'all don't know what's up, Alabama Nation. Feeling that? I mean, what, so what's on your mind right now? What's on my mind is, man, I'm ready for we, we – I'm, I'm waiting for us to take that championship home Monday. That's what I'm waiting for. I know. I, and, 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 I, and I feel you 100% on that. I'm ready to take the cha- I'm ready to take the championship home too. Appreciate that call, man. Feeling like taking that championship. Absolutely. We take our next call. You are live on the show. What's going on? Hey, Stephen. This is Mike from Kentucky. How you doing, brother? Mike, what's going on, man? How you How you been? <laughs> Fixing to have a clash of the Titans, brother. Nothing like it, man. Nothing like it. So, how how, how you feeling about this game? You nervous? You excited? You calm? No, you confident? How, how no, you feeling? I, 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 I've seen too many to get nervous at this point, bro. I've been watching football for a half a century. <laughs> Whatever. Here's here's what I see, Stephen. I don't think they're gonna put Jalen Waddle on that field if he can't ball. But if he steps on that field, you better move the safeties back five yards. Because Smitty and Waddle back, if he's back, he's going. If he ain't back 100, percent I don't think he should play. Because the boys work too much money. You know, I love, I already love him. He don't have to do that in my book. But if he's 100 percent or, or ready to play Monday night, it's going to be a long night. Because Mechie's just going to run free. They, they ain't even going to be thinking about Mechie. <laughs> it's going to get ridiculous, bro. And, 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 and not only met you, you got to also take account for Jaleel Billingsley, for Najee Harris out the backfield, and even guys like Forrestal and Slade Bolden. So, I mean, it, it's a lot for Ohio oh, State to cover. The, the, the question is, can they cover everybody, which you're not going to be able to cover everybody. Dude, if, if Waddle comes back, bro, I mean, I mean, we're deadly enough as it is. I don't think they can handle what we've been playing now. But with Waddle back, just forget about it. If hey, he can actually feel- play. You know, Bama don't yeah. play. We, we don't do trick plays. We don't do smoke and mirror. You know, Bama don't roll like that. If he steps on that field, you better back them safeties up. That's what I'm telling you, Sam. I got you, man. I, I got you. Appreciate that. Appreciate that coming from Mike from Kentucky. Appreciate that call that coming from Mike. Uh, everybody, be, be sure to call back in in that second call segment. Call back in, in the second segment, which is coming in about 10 minutes. Hold through the break. Got a quick topic right now before we take the next break, and it goes to Alabama football dominated the uh, college football award show on Thursday night. The Crimson Tide winning big in the award show. Devontae Smith taking home the Belitnikoff Award the Walter Camp Player of the Year, the Maxwell Player of the Year, Mac Jones taking home the Davey O'Brien National Quarterback of the Year, uh, Najee Harris taking home the Doak Walker Award for top running back, Landon Dickerson the Remington Award for top center, the Remington Trophy, and then you had uh, Alex Nether Award taking home the Outland Trophy, Steve Sarkeesian the Brawls Award, I mean Alabama racked up in the College Football Award show. And then five unanimous All-Americans when you look at Najee Harris, Devontae Smith, Alex Netherwood, Landon Dickerson, and Patrick Sertan II. All five selectors name them as first-team All-Americans. Mac Jones finishes as a consensus All-American. So kudos to the Crimson Tide football program handling business at the College Football Award Show. And then also the Tide getting five unanimous All-Americans to boot with that. But... We take our break right now. Upon our return, we sit down with Nathan Baird, who covers the Ohio State Buckeyes for Cleveland.com. You'll hear from Baird right after this. You know what we do at the start of the fourth quarter. We throw them foes up. But now, you don't have to wait until the fourth quarter. Get your four-finger bling necklace at WeOwnTheFourthQuarter.com. It's the first and only logo that captures the essence of all Crimson Tide players and fans as we represent the legendary Alabama football fourth quarter dominance. Get your four-finger bling necklace right now at WeOwnTheFourthQuarter.com. Get yours today and stun on them haters. 
Touchdown Alabama Magazine is Alabama football's premier publication. A subscription to Touchdown Alabama Magazine is the perfect gift for any Alabama fan. For exclusive news and information, recruiting updates, a free annual print magazine, and more, go to touchdownalabama.com and click join. Only $7.95 per month or pay $74.95 for a full year subscription. That's a yearly saving of $20. Go to touchdownalabama.com today and roll tide. Thank you for tuning in. Show your support right now by clicking that like button. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button now and enable all notifications to make sure you don't ever miss any of the best Alabama football news, notes, and information right here on Touchdown Alabama. Well, folks, we are back in from the break on the hottest show on the streets, the number one form for Crimson Tide football news in my own words with yours truly, Stephen Smith of Touchdown Alabama Magazine. And right now, we go over to the In My Own Words hotline. We pick up Nathan Baird, Nathan, who covers Ohio State football, uh, the football beat reporter for the Buckeyes for Cleveland.com. Nathan, man, happy to have you live on the show. Happy New Year to you. How you feeling? I'm doing well. I'm uh, ready to uh, get on a plane in a couple days and uh, get this season wrapped up. Absolutely. The Crimson Tide taking on Ohio State on Monday, January 11th of next week. Hard Rock Stadium in Miami Gardens, Florida for the national championship. Well, Nathan, first things first, Justin Fields, he mentioned to reporters this week that he's good to go. I know he took a shot in his he took a shot to his ribs in the Sugar Bowl, the, the second of two college football playoff semifinal matchups against Clemson. Uh, just looking at what Ryan Day had to say as the head coach and what Justin Fields has to say throughout practice this week, how has Justin Fields looked throughout practice? You know, that's difficult to assess because we don't get to watch practice and they don't disclose much about injuries here at Ohio State. I don't know how much it is down there, but they're pretty tight lipped about things up here. Um, we can say, you know, we talked to Justin Fields. Um, we talked to Ryan Day, like you said, we've talked to other players and, you know, he took that hit in the game. He took a couple of hits in that game. Really. There wasn't a lot of specificity as to what an injury might've been. He actually said it was his torso that was pretty messed up, which is a pretty vague area, obviously. And he complained about some pain in his hip. So I think there was, there was probably some injury there, but, or, or maybe a way to say it better is he got hurt. That doesn't necessarily mean he got injured. If you can, if you understand the difference there, like an injury is something that might you know keep you from playing. I don't really think that that's the case. I think he is probably uh, was banged up, um, and maybe there was something there that that needed some treatment throughout the week. But uh, the thing that I have maybe come away the most impressed with in some ways from these two seasons watching Justin Fields is his toughness. He has come back from a lot of things like this. You know, he was, he was banged up. You know, even back in high school, he broke his finger and ended his senior year. Um, probably something he would have tried to play through if he didn't have such a bright future ahead of him at the time. You know, he got uh, a knee injury last year that really hurt him, that he kind of had to gut it through, didn't miss any time. Um, this year, even going into the Sugar Bowl, was supposedly dealing with a, a thumb injury that he said was, was killing him after the Northwestern game, the Big Ten Championship game, and, and he obviously didn't have any effects from that. Even after he got smashed up by Clemson, he went out and threw like four more touchdown passes. It didn't really seem to limit him that much on the field. It affected him. You could tell from mechanics and the fact that he wasn't running as much that it was affecting him, but it didn't make him less effective. If that, you see the difference there. So um, I don't know that this is going to be a, a huge concern for Ohio State going into Monday. I think everybody is a little bit banged up at this time of the year. Maybe he's more banged up than others, but uh, I, I, it's not certainly ever – at no point this week did I have really any – question that he was probably going to be the starting quarterback on Monday and, and he'll probably play the full game assuming his body holds up. Now, before we get into uh, Trey Sermon here, Nathan, and we are joined live via the phone lines by Nathan Baird, who covers Ohio State, Ohio State football beat reporter for Cleveland.com, joining us live here on the show. Do you see any design runs here from Ryan Day to Justin Fields against the Crimson Tide? Is there a number of design runs we could see? Under normal circumstances, I'd say absolutely, because his legs are a big asset. Under these circumstances, I'm a little bit skeptical. I think, you know, Ohio State has, has run the ball really well all season and has run the ball incredibly well here the last couple games. 
And that's really a testimony to the offensive line that they have. Trey Sermon is playing the best football of his career, as you kind of mentioned in passing. They've got a couple tight ends that are pretty fantastic as blockers, Luke Farrell and Jeremy Ruckert. They got some notice for catching touchdown passes against Clemson. But there was a long stretch of games before that where they were not really used as receiving assets at all. And they were in there mostly for, you know, extra protection for fields or for extra uh, um, attack in the running game. So I I think they'll rely more on Sermon. They'll rely more on that offensive line, even in short yarded situations. The thing with fields is it's, it's not even always the designed runs. They will throw those in. I mean, any quarterback in this kind of modern offense, they're going to throw those in, but he's so much more dangerous when he just tucks it and runs, you know, teams will, do a good job maybe covering Ohio State's receivers on a given play, and that line can hold up well against the pass rush, and then he's off to the races. That's where he – that's how he got hurt, actually, in, that, in the Clemson game, was he was running on a third long play that, that Clemson had defended, and the guy uh, drilled him at the end of it. So that's where he's still – it would be against maybe his inclination sometimes to not do that, but he also does a pretty good job of, of hanging in the pocket and will even sometimes hold on to it too long and maybe take a couple sacks because, not because it's even necessarily a mistake per se, but because he believes in his abilities and, and in his receiver's abilities to turn that into a play. And there's times where that ends up being a, a, a big play for Ohio State, just as it sometimes is a sack. So that's the thing that I would need to keep an eye on. It's not so much whether they do design runs with him, is how much does he seem to not – want to just break out for those scrambles. I'll also say against Clemson, he's gotten better at at just throwing the ball away when he needs to. And the other thing against Clemson was Trey Sermon got used as kind of like just a check down option, little dump off passes. And some of those turned into big gains. I think he had 60 some, 64 yards on four catches, one of the best receiving games of his career. And if, if that's there for Ohio state, they've, they've shown um, kind of a new, willingness to use it because that hasn't been a big part of the offense throughout the season now Nate now Nathan just getting into now Trey Sermon when did it all kind of click for him uh, for the Buckeyes he comes over as a transfer from Oklahoma Master T who has had a pretty good uh, tenure with the Buckeyes he gets a little bit banged up and you have to go to Trey Sermon but at what point in this season for Ohio State did things really begin to click for the young man out the backfield? Pretty late, actually. You know, we had kind of mixed uh, scouting report on Sermon coming over from Oklahoma. It wasn't that we didn't think there was talent there. It was just his consistency hadn't really been there. It's one of the reasons why he wasn't playing as much at Oklahoma by the time he left, and he did get hurt. They had another guy emerge there and, and take over as the number one back. So we thought that he was going to help, and under the circumstances, we thought it was almost a lifesaver for Hostey because Master Teague tore his Achilles on the first day of spring practice. There wasn't a guarantee that he was going to be back for the start of the season, certainly when we thought the start of the season was going to be the first week of September, when we thought it was going to start on the normal schedule. We thought there was no way Master Teague would be ready for that, although he's a, kind of a physical specimen and was a little bit ahead of schedule. But then when the season started, both Sermon and Teague, going back to the season opening against Nebraska, were pretty – hesitant they did both of them coming off injuries sermon in the new system uh, there was a lot going on there and neither one of them had a lot of spark and then in the second game teague was the one who kind of found that spark ran really hard in the second half against penn state they just kind of rode him to to grind out that win and, and they, they had a big lead and just kind of used him to to seal it off and, and eat a lot of clock and from that point on the next few games teague was the lead guy we saw sermon make some plays against michigan state uh, which was uh, November, or first week of December. And really from that point on, then, you, like you said, Master Teague gets hurt early on in the Big Ten Championship game. But even that game, Sermon wasn't the starter. Teague came out and started. He ran the ball early. He had a couple carries and a, a reception on the first series. But something happened there. They haven't specified the injury, but they weren't letting him wear have his helmet on the sideline. And he was, he's been traveling with the team, so you can speculate as to what might be the issue there. But really – that Big Ten championship game was the revelation. Like it, people thought that, that, you know, both those guys were, were pretty good running backs, but I don't think anybody thought Sermon was capable of what he showed that day. I mean, 331 yards, breaking 
the single game rushing record that had been held by, you can just think of all the great running backs Ohio State has had, right? You know, Ezekiel Elliott and Eddie George and Archie Griffin. Like, he beat all those guys. Like, he's the guy at the top of that list now because of the performance he had that day. And, and then to carry it over the way he did against Clemson, and I would argue maybe even running harder and better against Clemson, even though it wasn't that kind of yield as far as the yardage. It, it's been just kind of a shocking late season rise for him, an, an explosion. And one that Ohio State really needed. I mean, we, I, you could argue maybe they don't end up beating Northwestern if he doesn't run the way he does because they were trailing at halftime of that game. And you, who knows how the Clemson game might have gone if their running game hadn't been so potent. So he has arrived at uh, his best football at the most perfect time for both him and Ohio State. Absolutely. The Buckeyes looking to get some things done with Sermon in this matchup against Alabama. The Crimson Tide are going to have to fit those run gaps and get some penetration to stop Sermon in that backfield before he really gets a full head of steam and gets going. But we're joined here on the phone lines with uh, by Nathan Baird, by Nathan Baird, who covers Ohio State, Ohio State football beat writer for Cleveland.com. And Nathan, so we go to this wide receiver room here for the Buckeyes and we pick up Chris Olave and Garrett Wilson. Both guys extremely talented. Olave kind of the best friend of Justin Fields, but Garrett Wilson, somebody who can create separation, make a lot of plays. How do both of these guys hurt you? What sets both of these two guys apart when you talk about attacking defensive secondaries, and in particular Alabama's defensive secondary, when you look at Olave and Garrett Wilson? So we knew – Olave was kind of an established guy last year, and we knew Wilson was coming. He had some, he flashed some big things as a freshman. He had a really acrobatic catch against Clemson in the Fiesta Bowl last year's playoff semifinals. So we knew he was going to be a thing. But we had always kind of considered him as like the next thing on the outside, and Ohio State was kind of was was recruiting differently for what they were going to do in the slot. But the thing with Ryan Day and Brian Hartline kind of putting their minds together decided by the spring that it was time to try Garrett Wilson in the slot because the way Ohio State has used the slot, they had a guy named K.J. Hill there the previous four years who was the all-time leading receiver at Ohio State because they just fed that slot position so much. Uh, Urban Meyer used to call it H-back, but it, it's a slot anymore in the way that, that Ryan Day uses it. So that was kind of a fascinating development because you were taking – I guess if I were to make the comparison for Alabama fans who might be listening to this, I would say that Chris Olave is a little bit more like the Devonta Smith who is um, maybe just like a, just that more like prototypical, like solid all around receiver, like runs great routes, has great hands, just like just just so technically and and athletically gifted. Whereas Wilson is maybe a little bit more like the Jalen Waddle, where there's like this electricity there. You know what I mean? Kind of like a just a, that kind of explosive guy. Not that Devontae Smith can't do that, too, because Chris Olave can do it, too. But I, if you see what I mean, like the, that balance that they have. So that's what has been the tough thing. You know, when they didn't have Olave against Northwestern because of his COVID-19 test, um, that, that offense missed him. He, he, his absence was definitely notable. Uh, just Field seemed out of sorts. I think it hurt Garrett Wilson that Chris Olave wasn't there that day. They just didn't seem to be the same flow to that offense. That's why they had to turn to the running game to such an extent to win that game. Whereas bringing him back against Clemson, even though Garrett Wilson didn't have a big receiving day, um, it, it, it opened up so much because you, you've got to pick one or the other. And, and then underneath, that's why I think when Clemson was trying to take away both of those guys, that's why the tight ends ended up catching three touchdowns. So Pete Golding was, was talking about this the other day, that it's for Ohio State, it's, it's not necessarily any one guy. You've got to have a plan as it is for Alabama. You, you've got to have a plan for accounting for all of this because Ohio State, you know, didn't throw to the tight ends for like two months. But once Clemson tried to take away Olave and Wilson so hard in those, you know, uh, down the field scenarios, late field scenarios, that's where it opened things up for the tight ends. I think that's where Alabama is going to have to find a, a kind of an interior answer for some of these problems besides just those two receivers. And even when you, just as with Alabama, even when you think you have an answer, or trying to cover those those two receivers. Sometimes they're going to get theirs. I mean, these are two really good receivers. They, I don't know if either of them is ever going to contend for a Heisman Trophy, um, and I don't know that either of them will ever get drafted as high as the two Alabama guys are. But uh, don't sleep on. I mean, they're they're legitimately talented. Um, Wilson especially can can do some really special things on the field. And like I said, Olave is just really solid. Uh, and I don't mean that in a pejorative way. He's not a possession receiver. I'm just saying, like again, just like with 
with Smith, I mean, the hands are there, the routes are there, just a, a, a guy that you can rely on to make big plays. And, and, um, and then on top of that, they got a kid named Jameson Williams who caught a big touchdown over the top, too. So as with Alabama, once you even get down to like that third and fourth guy, when they recruit at this level, because you know that Ohio State's pulling in you know, high four and five-star guys just like Alabama is a lot, those guys aren't slouches either. Going to be a huge matchup on next week, Monday of next week, between Bama and Ohio State. Winner take all college football playoff national championship at Hard Rock Stadium in Miami. But, Nathan, we appreciate you coming on, talking Ohio State, breaking down Justin Fields, Trey Sermon, this fantastic receiver core as Ryan Day tries to go after his first championship as a head coach for the Buckeyes. Nate, you take care of yourself. Be good. Appreciate having you on, man. Sure thing. Thanks a lot. Absolutely. Nathan Baird covering the Ohio State Buckeyes for Cleveland.com. Ohio State football beat reporter right there. We take our break here on the show. Don't touch that dial because when we get back, we get back into the phone lines to have a, di- to have a dialogue conversation with you, the Alabama football fans. We take your calls right after this. Don't touch that dial. Call in right now as we're taking your calls up next on In My Own Words with Stephen M. Smith. Brought to you by We Own the Fourth Quarter. Visit WeOwnTheFourthQuarter.com now to get your four-finger bling necklace. You know what we do at the start of the fourth quarter. We throw them foes up. But now you don't have to wait until the fourth quarter. Get your four-finger bling necklace at WeOwnTheFourthQuarter.com. It's the first and only logo that captures the essence of all Crimson Tide players and fans as we represent the legendary Alabama football fourth quarter dominance. Get your four-finger bling necklace right now at WeOwnTheFourthQuarter.com. Get yours today and stun on them haters. Touchdown Alabama Magazine is Alabama football's premier publication. A subscription to Touchdown Alabama Magazine is the perfect gift for any Alabama fan. For exclusive news and information, recruiting updates, a free annual print magazine, and more, go to touchdownalabama.com and click join. Only $7.95 per month or pay $74.95 for a full year subscription. That's a yearly saving of $20. Go to touchdownalabama.com today and roll tide. Back in from the break, ladies and gentlemen, on the hottest show on the streets, number one form for all things Bama football news. In my own words, with yours truly, Stephen Smith of Touchdown Alabama Magazine. Appreciate my man, Nathan Baird, coming on, talking some Ohio State football, breaking down or or sizing up uh, the Buckeyes for this matchup against Alabama. Coming up next week on Monday of next week for the college football playoff national championship game. But before we get into the phone, lines to take your calls call segment brought to you by the blue wrench gang a couple of super chats to get to how about spencer revely again donating that five dollars into, into the super chats appreciate that coming from spencer revely and also senator hines the pimp of the blue wrench gang senator hines dropping in that 499 we have a super chats appreciate the love coming from him but Also, another thing before we take your phone calls, got to remind you of the latest sponsor to TDA, Touchdown Alabama Magazine, and that's mybookie.ag. Mybookie.ag. If you're feeling fortunate next week, if you're feeling good about putting some money down on this game, you feel like you got the skills to make this thing shake as far as making the right bets are concerned, check out mybookie.ag. That is mybookie.ag. Make the right play. And sign up today at mybookie.ag. And when you do, when you do sign up, use the promo code TD Alabama to get your deposit matched halfway all the way up to 1000 bucks. To 1000 bucks. You can't beat that with the stick. So make the right play. Sign up today at mybookie.ag. And when you do, you use the promo code TD Alabama to get TD Alabama to get the deposit matched halfway. All the way up to $1,000, mybookie.ag. Play it right now. Get your win on right now. Newest sponsor to Touchdown Alabama Magazine. But we take your phone we take your phone calls right now, 205-448-1358. The number two, call in and let your voice, your opinions, your thoughts be heard on the show, 205-448-1358. We grab a call right now. You're live on the show. What's going on? 
What's going on? Am I on? Yes, you are on. How you doing, brother? First and foremost, thanks for having me on. Uh, secondly, Go Bucks. This is Go Jay from the chat. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Still there? Oh, okay, cool, cool. First and foremost, first, first and foremost, hey, our receiving group, we ain't taking a bad seat to nobody. I know y'all got a good staff over there, a good re receiving room over there, but we taking a back seat to nobody. Justin Fields, that Wisconsin tape, it fooled y'all. It fooled Clifton. He was pressing. He was trying to win the Heisman. The best thing that could have happened for Ohio State is when he got knocked out of the Heisman conversation because now he's playing football. Now he's checking the ball down. Yeah, I hear y'all got a good offense, but guess what? Y'all got to line up and play us too. I don't believe Pat Sertain. He's going to get tested. We throwing the ball at him. Yeah, y'all got a solid D-line, but we got an O-line too. Y'all got five stars. We got five stars. Let's just see what happened. I got Ohio State winning 38 to 24. Yeah, we them boys, and we're going to show y'all how it's done. Oh, no. Go. All right, then. Appreciate that call right there. We got the Ohio State faithful calling in here 38 to 24 in favor of the Buckeyes. His prediction I like Alabama way more than Ohio State. I feel like the Buckeyes offensive, offensively, they got a good offense, but that offensive line, can it keep Justin Fields protected? That's the big question mark. Fields, as I mentioned, has been sacked 20 times this year. But we take our next call right now. You're live on the show. What's going on? Oh, Steven, you picked me up right on time, my brother. Ooh, hey, what's going on, TDA? It's your boy, Senator Hines. I'm back, baby. I'm back like I ain't never left, baby. Been a busy week, but I'm back. How you doing, Steven? Yeah, I I'm good, but I'm even better knowing that the pimp is here. <laughs> man, look, man, you know, I'm glad. You, it's, it's, isn't it ironic? You know I like to talk trash. That an Ohio State fan calls in before me. Hey, Mr. J, I know you're still in the chat. Hey, I know that false confidence thing works, you know, during the regular season, but it's the natty, baby. Saban got so much on his plate right now, folks. The media trying to distract him. And we all know how Saban gets down when he got time to get his guys, when he got media uh, fuel to add to the fire. Come on, man. Well, let's just talk about the, the – let's address a few points that, that, that my boy, uh, Mr. J from Ohio, just, just addressed in, in the phone call. He's talking about them receivers. Justin Fields no better than a dope, uh, dope package for Tan Wake. And I think Justin Fields is more worried about our defensive line than Ryan Day is. Ryan Day got this false hope. Justin Fields know what's up. He escaped. He left Georgia for a reason. He saw how them boys did Jake Prom in the Natty and then in the SEC Championship game. He ain't trying to go through that. You know what I'm saying? That's why he left. He, he got tried to get that hype during the regular season. COVID helped Justin Fields, I, I tell you that, because my boy, he hasn't, he hasn't grown like I expected. I still think he, he, he got a little bit more to grow um, before he goes to the league. Great athlete, great quarterback. Um, I just, he just, his, his ability to break down defenses as far as reading coverages is not there. And um, honestly, if you think about it, that's why he never got the nod at, at, at Georgia. That and some other things, you know, but I'll keep that to myself. But, man, I'm excited about Monday, bro. I'm excited. Jalen Waddle's back. This is crazy, man. It was like 2020 just need to, needed to hurry up and end so we can get back to our regular schedule program as far as Alabama football, man. And I'm ready. I'm ready, Stephen. I, I was so happy I was able to get off and get on the phone and call in and get to the chat and talk to my people. Blue Ridge Gang, stand up. But uh, we out here, man. Stephen, I'm excited, man. I got Alabama 41, uh, Ohio State 24. Maybe 21. I don't, I don't think Ohio State going to be score, be able to score like that, man. That whole line looks so shaky against Clemson. And we know Clemson is not as deep and talented as they was last year. Um, but they, they look shaky early. It's just Justin Fields and, and Olave made a few plays early that stretched them out, opened up the middle, like you said. The, the tight ends capitalized on some easy catches, easy dump off um, passes. Uh, Thurman is, is probably a concern for me. That boy is a, is a beast back there. But like I said, I don't think um, Ohio State has seen the level of talent as far as um, their offense versus uh, a talented defense um, as Alabama. And we know how our guys do when they're, when they're able to have that extra week of preparation. So I'm ready to see it, man. I'm ready to see it. Um, appreciate you taking my call, brothers. And, and keep on rolling, man. Roll tide, family. 
Appreciate the call. They're coming from Senator Hines calling in two in my own words tonight. Senator's prediction, 41 to 24 in favor of Alabama. Appreciate that from him. We take another call right now. You're live on the show. What's going on tonight? What's going on, Stephen? How you doing, brother? Doing good in yourself. How you feeling? Man, I can't complain. Senator, I agree with you 100%. I'm so happy I'm behind Senator Hines. Mr. J, look, I'm in Dallas. And I work with a whole bunch of Ohio State people. They talking this crap, water, water, water. Sermon only had one game, and that's against Northwest, and now he's the greatest thing since sliced cheese. Everybody talk about our wide receivers, right? Yeah, they great. But everybody forgetting that X factor, and that's Mr. Najee Harris, who barely got a vote for the Heisman. I think he's going to be pissed, and I think he's going to whoop up on that line at Ohio State. So everybody looking for Sermon to get 200? No, sir. You better watch Deuce Deuce. So what do you think about this, Steve? Watch Deuce Deuce is correct. He he felt like he should have been in that top four. Like the Bama fans feel like Najee Harris should have been in there. I'll be pe- I'll be looking at Najee Harris, but also keep your eyes on 19 Jamil Billingsley. Everyone's talking about Ohio State's tight ends and they're good, but Jamil Billingsley's popping too now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I agree with that, Stephen. I appreciate what you do. Waylon, ha ha, let you send a door. You my man. Talk to you later, Steve. Appreciate that call coming in. I'm telling you, watch for Jaleel Billingsley this week, next week. He's going to have something to say on Monday against Ohio State in that defensive front, defensive secondary there. We take our next call of the night. You're live on the show. What's going on? What's up, Steve? What's happening? I don't know. You tell me what's going on. I mean, Man, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. It's the new year, first and foremost. I fly out to Miami tomorrow morning. I'm hyped up. I'm good. Are you, are you hyped up? We are good, huh? I, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm ready to go. I'll tell you what, Steven. I mean, I'm an Alabama fan, too enough. I ain't got no doubt about that. I see one thing about it. You got to look at this here now. I don't know about that defense now. Alabama defense. I mean, they're pretty sorry, man. What you, what you got to say about it, Steve? I'm going to say this. Pass rushing has been better since the Georgia game. Like I said, those 34 sacks, Bama got 29 have come since Georgia. All Alabama's got to do, hit Justin Fields, consistently hit him, make sure he don't run on you, but consistently get to him and fit the runs when Trey Sermon gets the ball, be there before he get going. You hit Justin Fields, you take Sermon out of his element, you pretty much got Ohio State. You right about that, though, man. I mean, I mean, I tell you, they go back a little bit, little Steven. Look at this Florida game. They take this Florida game out now. Come on, that defense with Alabama had, though, man. I mean, I mean, now Florida should not have them in the point. I mean, I don't think – I don't think we really, I mean, uh, got close to Alabama. We are, we are close now. That, I mean, that Florida game, that, that quarterback, that quarterback, why they ain't hitting that quarterback like they're supposed to? What you got to say a few minutes ago, Steven, it should be hitting that quarterback from Florida. They didn't. I mean, I mean they run all the time. I, I mean, that, that, that high old game, I mean, that high old quarterback with the guy now, he going to do the same thing. He gonna do the same thing. I mean, what Florida quarterback did? They gotta watch. They gotta watch that roll now. They gotta watch that roll, Stephen. I see one thing about it. I mean, Rose Tide gonna get them though. They gonna get them. I mean, I mean, they gonna get them now. Appreciate that call coming right here. That guy needs to be a coach. That guy needs to be a coach right there. Appreciate that call coming in. But I'm just gonna stop the run. Bama's got to stop the run, and Alabama's got to consistently get to Justin Fields. You stop Trey Sermon before he gets going, absolutely, and you get to Justin Fields consistently. Going back to of uh, the 20 sacks that he has, that, that the offensive line has given up on him, eight of them came against, against Indiana and Northwestern combined. So if you get to him, knock him down, get to him, rough him up, frustrate him as well as fit the gaps on Trey Sermon, you pretty much got Ohio State exactly where you need to have him at in terms of Alabama. Now, we're going to go to a quick topic here before we get back to the phone lines. Quick topic here. And how about this? 
the Bama, the Bama alums in the NFL. The NFL announced its all-pro team today, and we got four Alabama football alums on the all-pro team. Derrick Henry of the Tennessee Titans, Minka Fitzpatrick of the Pittsburgh Steelers, Calvin Ridley of those Atlanta Falcons, and Ryan Kelly of the Indianapolis Colts. Now, Minka Fitzpatrick and Derrick Henry, both of those two, first team all-pro. Kudos to Minka, kudos to Derrick Henry. First team All-Pro for those two, for Calvin Ridley and Ryan Kelly. Second team All-Pro for those two. So kudos to all four individuals, all four Bama alums, all four Bama alums making the NFL All-Pro team. And as for Minka Fitzpatrick, Derrick Henry, first team NFL All-Pro for those two young men. We take our next break here on the show, but when we come back, we're going to get back into the phone lines to take your call. So we're going to go to the break, hold through the break. We'll get back to entertain your phone calls right after this. If you're an avid Alabama Crimson Tide fan and you love to flaunt it, then show your Alabama Crimson Tide support by grabbing the Alabama sneakers. They feature bold Crimson Tide graphics, so no one will be able to question where your allegiance lies. When you add these sweet sneakers to your Alabama Crimson Tide collection, go to stsfootwear.com and use the code TDALABAMA for $15 off your purchase. That's code TDALABAMA for $15 off your purchase. Go to stsfootwear.com and get your Alabama sneakers today. Touchdown Alabama Magazine is Alabama football's premier publication. A subscription to Touchdown Alabama Magazine is the perfect gift for any Alabama fan. For exclusive news and information, recruiting updates, a free annual print magazine, and more, go to touchdownalabama.com and click join. Only $7.95 per month or pay $74.95 for a full year subscription. That's a yearly saving of $20. Go to touchdownalabama.com today and roll tide. Thank you for tuning in. Show your support right now by clicking that like button. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button now and enable all notifications to make sure you don't ever miss any of the best Alabama football news, notes, and information right here on Touchdown Alabama. All right, folks, we are back in from the break here on the hottest show on the streets, uh, the hottest show on the streets, number one forum for Bama football news in my own words with yours truly, Stephen Smith of Touchdown Alabama Magazine. Had a fun call segment uh, in, on the previous segment, and we're back to take more of your phone calls. But before we do that, got some more Super Chats to get to. First and foremost, Randy Harris donating that $6 into the Super Chats. Appreciate that from Randy Harris. Spencer Revley, another $5 coming in from him. And then Go Jay, our Ohio State caller calling in here. Go Jay donating that $19.99. So we're even getting love from the Buckeye Nation with Go Jay's donation there. Willie351, that 333 coming in from him. Gucci Tide, another $10 donation from him. Jeffrey Gregg, $4.99 donation from him. And Roll Tide and Rise Up putting in that $10 donation as well. So we appreciate you. The passionate fans of college football, Alabama and Ohio State, donating to Touchdown Alabama Magazine. But we jump back into the phone lines right now. We take another call. You're live on the show. What's going on? Hey, Stephen. This is Clark from Georgia. How you doing, bud? What's going on, Clark? How you feeling? Oh, I'm doing good. I, I got to tell you, if you ain't getting fired up for this game Monday night, I, I really do think you would wit. But uh, let's let's go ahead and break it down just a little bit. So uh, I, I really do think Monday night's going to be a culmination of uh, of really everything that Saban's put together since he faced Ohio State the last time. Uh, if you look at the kind of athlete that we've recruited since 2014, yeah, our defense has gotten a little bit smaller through the front seven, but they're still more than capable of stopping the run. And uh, let's just be honest, they're, they're pretty lethal as it comes to the amount of athletes that we have on that side of the ball. Uh, Trey Sermon, I, I really do think he's going to get a, a couple runs here and there. But uh, uh, all in all, if, if they can keep Justin Fields from taking the top off the defense, I think Alabama's shaping up really well in this game. Uh, I got I got Bama winning about 45-31. 45-31, we got you down here, Clark. 45-31, appreciate that phone call coming from Clark out of Georgia. He's got Bama 45-31. We take our next call. You're live on the show. What's going on? 
You're live, Carla. What's going on? We lost that call. We'll go to the next caller right now. You're live on the show. What's going on? Yo, what up, man? What's happening with you? I'm Nate from... Not much. Well, the guy before this said... Whatever the thing was. Here's the thing with Bama. We're a 50-plus point team. And uh, Ohio State's like a 40-point team. So we got this easy. The only person I'm really looking out for is um, our wide receiver, our running back, and our quarterback. I mean, Devontae is going to go off. We know that for a fact. So, Najee is going to go off, and we know Matt Jones is going to go off. So, I mean, they're going to prove something to Ohio State that we've never done before. Look. Right. Looking forward to the game, man. Excited for Monday. Appreciate that call right there. We take our next call. You're live on the show. What's going on tonight? Steven M. It's Spencer's that time in the again, building, brother. people. Nettie Spencer's time. in the building. <laughs> Just so the uh, case everybody forgot, uh, my uh, when beginning the season there, when uh, Stephen M. put out, what was your favorite national championship year? What did I say there, Stephen M.? You said, and I quote Spencer, it would be this season. <laughs> yes, sir, and that is a fact, and I stand behind it. And uh, I want to say real quick, because I know there's a lot of people in here, but real quick, I want to thank everybody in the chat line, the haters, naysayers, the Road Tide family, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in to Stephen M. Please come back. We love you. Come on back. Just keep it clean. Now, a question for you, then I'll get off of here. All these shows I've been watching on sports, even on our chat line here, what has Ohio State's defense showed that they think they're going to keep Alabama under 40 points. I feel like against Clemson, Spencer, Ohio State did some good things. They really did. They got after the quarterback. They made some plays. But then on top of that, you know, Clemson's offensive line – what has not been all that great all season. So Ohio State benefited from attacking a Clemson offensive line that was never that, that was that was not truly consistent all year. You're looking at an Alabama offensive line, which has been consistent all year. And I know Chris Owens is not Landon Dickerson, but Chris Owens is capable of getting the job done at center. Then on top of that, you look at Facing a Najee Harris going up against a wide receiver core of not just Smith, but you got you got Mechie, you got Waddle who's looking to get back on this field, you've got Slade Bolden, you've got Jaleel Billingsley, so many guys that you have to keep your eye on. And as good as Sean Wade is in the secondary for the Buckeyes, Sean Wade got embarrassed quite a bit against the Clemson wide receiver core. So th th this is going to be a huge challenge for Ohio State. I know they got some talent defensively, but this is going to be a huge challenge, especially when you look at Steve Sarkeesian going to be all up in his bag on Monday. I agree with that. Thanks so much. Put my score down, Alabama 48, Ohio State 24. Thanks, sir, and have a great night. Road Tide. Appreciate that from Spencer. 48 for 24 in favor of Bama for him. We take our next call. You are live on the show. What's going on? Hello? You're live, Carl. You're live. Hey, I'm just trying to see if you got an uh, update on Jason Waddle at practice today. Update here on Jalen Waddle. Uh, been, been moving well, cutting well, been able to practice this entire week. Uh, according to according to his teammates, whether it's Mac Jones, Devontae Smith, John Mechie, or you know whomever we've, we've been able to get a chance to talk to, they have all they all have loved how he's looked on the field. He should be able to play. I, I think he's going to play. I don't think he starts, but I think he gets out there on that field. But we appreciate that phone call right there. I think Jalen Waddle gets out there on that field. We take our next call. Though you're alive, well, before we take our next call, 
We got our topic. Well, 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 I guess we'll have a topic right now, but we're going to go to break. We're going to take our break right now. We appreciate you guys calling into the show, having your thoughts, having your viewpoints, your opinions. We're going to take our break right now. But when we get back, we will dive into one. DeMarco Hellams, and why I, and why I feel like this is a game that he needs to start for the Crimson Tide against Ohio State. We'll break down DeMarco Hellams after this. Touchdown Alabama Magazine is Alabama football's premier publication. A subscription to Touchdown Alabama Magazine is the perfect gift for any Alabama fan. For exclusive news and information, recruiting updates, a free annual print magazine, and more, go to touchdownalabama.com and click join. Only $7.95 per month or pay $74.95 for a full year subscription. That's a yearly saving of $20. Go to touchdownalabama.com today and roll tide. Thank you for tuning in. Show your support right now by clicking that like button. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button now and enable all notifications to make sure you don't ever miss any of the best Alabama football news, notes, and information right here on Touchdown Alabama. All right, people, we appreciate everybody for calling us today, checking us out, tuning in, being in the chat line. That's Alabama and Ohio State fans listening to the number one source for Crimson Tide football news in my own words with yours truly, Stephen Smith of Touchdown Alabama Magazine on a Friday TGIF edition of the show. And before we get into the final topic of conversation, got to shout out Bama to the bone. Bama to the bone. Donating that $5 into the Super Chats. Appreciate that love coming from Bama to the bone. But before we get into the final topic, we got to remind you of this also. TDAware.com. That is TDAware.com. If you fancy the I Love Hearing Touchdown Alabama shirts, the We Want Football shirts, Let Them Play shirts, hoodies of all shapes, sizes, forms, and colors, we got you covered right here. TDAWear.com. That is TDAWear.com. Go there right there. Make us your plug, your number one stop shop for all of your football football uh, clothing, purchasing, purchasing apparel needs. Show them that support too. Coach Saban, the University of Alabama, for student athletes and us here at TDA. Check it out, check it out there at TDAware.com. But we're getting to now one DeMarco Hellams, Alabama defensive back DeMarco Hellams. Coach Saban mentioned on uh, during the Rose Bowl game against Notre Dame that the reason why he went more so, more so toward Hellams was it was a physical game. You know, they the fighting Irish, physical up front, wanting to run the football, wanting to establish the run game, wanting to impose its will. So it became a matchup for DeMarco Helms to play quite a bit, a, a lot in that game. And he answered the bell. He answered the challenge. The young man, the sophomore, at 6'1", 208 pounds from uh, DeMatha, the math uh, Catholic high, the math uh, Catholic school in the Washington D.C. area. Uh, Helms, 12 tackles in that matchup, one tackle for loss, one sack. Bama getting the 31 to 14 win over the Fighting Irish. And it was the second time this season where Helms has led the team in tackles. The first time was against LSU in the regular season, had eight tackles, half a tackle for loss, and one pass breakup. And uh, just to me. Here's another matchup against Ohio State where the Buckeyes are going to want to be physical. They're going to try to take it to Alabama, impose its will on the Crimson Tide. Here's another matchup where if I'm Nick Saban, I would start DeMarco Hellams in that secondary at free safety over Daniel Wright. No offense to Daniel Wright, but it's just like there are moments where Daniel's played strong this season. He's been solid. And then there are moments where he has looked lost in translation. There are moments where he is not quite all the way there on the play. And when you're facing a, when you're facing an offense like Ohio State with Ryan Day as the play caller, you want to have your best focus locked in athletes on the field at all times. And DeMarco Helms, to me, a focused, lasered in, locked in athlete. He's got... The, he's got the size to play in the box and stop in the run, but he's also got the quickness, the footwork, the agility, the coverage skills to play on 
these wide receivers. And just to me, he's a bit more of a more disciplined version of Landon Collins. Not saying that Landon Collins was not disciplined. He was. But there were moments where Landon Collins would hit you. He would hit you. But there were moments where he would not finish the play, wouldn't wrap up. He got better in his latter years with Alabama, but in his early years, he would hit you, boom, bring the boom stick, but would not finish the play. And then there were moments where Landon Collins, in coverage, would try to go for the big interception, would try to go for the big play, but then at times would get burned with that as well. So to me, I feel like DeMarco Helms a bit more of a more disciplined version of Landon Collins, while at the same time, he carries that ability to be an aggressive finisher in terms of tackling in the box when you look at breaking down in space and finishing plays on running backs or quarterback scrambling or being able to chase down guys to finish plays. So to me, this is a, this is a good opportunity. If I'm Nick Saban, this is a really good opportunity to start DeMarco Hellams at that free safety position now. I feel like Alabama would go in more so dime package against Ohio State. We could see some nickel. We could definitely see some nickel. But I see a lot more of that dime defensive look there for Alabama just due to Ohio State's going to look to spread the field out, get all of its best athletes on the field, whether it's Garrett Wilson, Chris Olave, uh, have – Trey Sermon catching passes out of the backfield. They've got a couple of tight ends. One in particular has got five touchdown receptions on the year. So for me, I feel like Alabama would go out in more of that dime package, but you could see some nickel in there as well. But, you know, on top of all of this, an update on one Malachi Moore. Uh, in talking with Patrick Sertan II during the media uh, availability period, Sertan mentioned that Moore strong in practice this week. He's been able to move around, able to bend around, able to cut around, looks good, should be able to go against Ohio State, especially after he got nicked up a bit in the Florida game, and then after the Florida game, he did not play against uh, Notre Dame in the Rose Bowl. He did dress out. He was on the sideline, just did not play. Coach Saban had him, list, had him listed as day-to-day, -day, but according to Patrick Sertan, uh, Malachi Moore, the freshman, good week of practice. He's been out there. He's been balling. He's been flying around the field. Should be good to go for the national championship against the Buckeyes, but if I was Coach Saban in this situation, I would definitely look at potentially starting DeMarco Helms. He's good, he's big time, aggressive, strong tackler, but can also, but also does a solid job, strong job playing and coverage there and defending quite a bit of these, you know, quite the majority of these wide receivers. And when you look at wanting to get your best guys in the field in a matchup of this magnitude, I, my eyes are definitely looking at putting DeMarco Helms out there on that field and seeing the potential that he brings next season because next season I think Helms could knock down a starting spot in that secondary. But Tide Nation, if you're looking forward to having the best in news, notes, information, and coverage on your favorite football program, the Crimson Tide, it's very simple and easy for you, for you to get this. You can get this by accessing the Touchdown Alabama Magazine app. You download the app from the iPhone App Store. If you're rocking Team Apple, Google Play Store. If you just so happen to have the Android phone. For your audio listening needs, we got you covered right here. iTunes or Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Spreaker, TuneIn Radio, Overcast.fm, or iHeartRadio. Got you covered there on the audio dial right there. If the good and gracious Lord sees fit, I shall return on Monday to put a pretty bow on this season in terms of recapping. Well, not Monday, to, not Monday, Wednesday, my bad. Wednesday, we'll return on Wednesday to recap the national championship game and how it all boiled down for you. We got a shout out here, my man, Josh Berry. Josh Berry donating that $4.99. Be the Super Chats. Appreciate that love there coming from one Josh Berry. Also, Tide fans, you can purchase individual copies of Touchdown Alabama Magazine. Have those sent to your door. That link will be found in the description. Also, be sure to get you that four-finger bling necklace, four-finger bling jewelry, courtesy of WeOwnTheFourthQuarter.com. That link will be found in the description as well. 
But until next time, folks, husbands love your wives. Wives appreciate value. Those husbands, children, the weekend is in. The weekend is in. Do the things legitimately now. Do things legitimately to not be bored. As always, get you those three hearty meals a day, those three great laughs a day. Protect yourself. Protect the loved ones around you. Enjoy the game next Monday night. It's Bama, Ohio State for the national championship. And until next time, folks, so long, everybody. Spending my own words.